So good morning, welcome to all. Uh, nice to see you virtually as I am today. Uh, thank you for uh, this opportunity uh, for me to sneak out into the wilderness a little bit, although there are probably people around the countryside that think I live in the wilderness, so, but uh, whatever, that might be a state of mind, who knows. But it is a good to uh, have you all gathered again today around your television sets or uh, what they used to say in the 40s, your radio, uh, get it all tuned in and uh, you can uh, join us this day in worship. Um, we will return to a normal worship schedule on uh, August uh, 2nd um, at normal times. And uh, also I'd like to remind you that if you're in need of any kind of pastoral care uh, in my absence uh, to give Pastor Molly Eversall a call. Uh, she's down at Messiah Lutheran, and I believe we have her cell phone number published uh, in last week's bulletin, so you should be able to get a hold of her uh, that way. Uh, that all being said, then let us begin worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercies endure forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, that, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Our opening hymn today is number 771. Guidance till our goals and your 
stars are one. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. Beloved and sovereign God, through the death and resurrection of your Son, you bring us into your kingdom of justice and mercy. By your Spirit, give us your wisdom that we may treasure the life that comes from Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading today comes from 1 Kings, the third chapter, verses 5 through 12. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son who sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David. Although I am only a little child, I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, 
a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil, for who can govern this your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, Because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches, or for the life of your enemies, but asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. The psalm refrain for today, July the 26th, goes as follows. When your word is opened, it gives light and understanding. Let's all try that together. When your word is opened, it gives light and understanding. Your decrees are wonderful, therefore I obey them with all my heart. When your word is opened, it gives light, it gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pant, because I long for your commandments. Turn to me and be gracious to me, as you always do to those who love your name. When your word is opened, it gives light and understanding. Order my footsteps in your word. Let no iniquity have dominion over me. Rescue me from those who oppress me, and I will keep your commandments. Let your face shine upon your servant, and teach me your statutes. My eyes shed streams of tears, because people do not keep your teaching. When your word is opened, it gives light and understanding. Our second reading today comes to us from the 8th chapter of Romans, verse 26 to 39. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to His purpose. For those whom He foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own Son, but gave up all for us, Will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who was at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness, 
or peril or sword. That is, as it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long, as we are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in the field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be a weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who bring out all of his treasure, what is new and what is old. The gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, all of creation sings to your glory, for your goodness goes beyond our understanding. Not by what we do or deserve, you give to us all that we need for life. All that you do is out of the love that you have for us. You give us forgiveness that we might have a right relationship with you and give us knowledge that we might understand the needs of others so we are able to serve them with the same love and compassion that you show us. Strengthen our hearts and minds to stand up for justice and peace throughout all of creation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus. Amen. Two curious things were asked of me when I was going through uh, chemotherapy and radiation treatments for cancer. 
The first was to uh, consume mass quantities of food. Wow. Being fed through the tube, uh, you know, this seemed like it wasn't going to be accomplished very easily, but uh, they had this cans of some kind of fancy mixture that had at least 5,000 calories in it, and I had a couple of those a day, and then uh, to make sure that things would continue along and fill myself with calories, there was always a, a bottle of Ensure that could be used or uh, plenty of Carnation Instant Breakfast. When I finally began to eat solid food, uh, the second odd request came. Do not eat foods with iodized salt in them. Well, I didn't think that would be much of a challenge. I mean, I quit using salt back in 1972, so I thought this would be a piece of cake. But my caregivers warned me that this would be much more difficult than I thought it would be, suggesting that I carefully examine the foods that I was buying. I am indeed glad that the government requires foods to have nutritional labels on them. I soon discovered that almost everything I had been eating continued, contained all sorts of iodized salt. Sauces, canned goods, frozen foods, breads, all of these things contained iodized salt. I searched high and low throughout the shelves and even salt alternatives going to the uh, uh, health food stores and yet found the same problem. Iodized salt was hidden in just about everything. As we read through and listen to our texts for today, I think we'll discover that which has been hidden from us. What we are being shown is a generous, gift-giving God who wishes to give us life in the kingdom, a kingdom that appears to be small and insignificant when uh, looked at through the lens of the, this particular world and uh, the reckless pursuit it has for domination, or when we hear the words of this gospel, things are hidden from this world. If you were to take and drop a small seed like the mustard the size of a pinhead, into prepared soil, though, you would find it you most difficult to sort through that soil and find that seed once again. And if you were to take the yeast and throw it into the bread uh, flour yourself and mix it all together, I'll guarantee you that you will not be able to sort that yeast back out from the flour and treasures that are buried are discovered usually by accident. In all these things, we see the smallest of ideas, watching them grow into something much bigger than itself. Revealed to us is that good and bad commingle, as in the wheat and the weeds, or that some are at least deaf and blind to the good news, while others indeed are receptive of this new way of living and this beautiful creation we have been placed into. We discover new treasures, willing to give up everything else that we might someday truly live in the knowledge of these new truths, trusting in the end all will be sorted out freeing us from lives of judgment. So I ask, what are our discoveries? Is it the treasure that nothing can separate us from the love of God? Have we discovered that all we need, God has provided? Have we found the kingdom of God? Is the kingdom truly near. 
The kingdom of God is present wherever Jesus' influence is felt. When we advocate for justice, the kingdom is there. When we show mercy and goodness, the kingdom is there. When we give comfort to those trying to immigrate to a new land, the kingdom is there. When we share the gifts we have received with those who are lacking, the kingdom has come. All these hidden things revealed to us. We open our eyes and our ears to see and hear that which seems to be hidden. We use our voices to become that small idea that blooms and infects the entirety of the world as we bear witness to the love that God has for us all. And we pray, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done. Amen. The hymn of the day is number 604. church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, our bishops, Elizabeth and Catherine, for the world and all who are in need. Merciful God, your reign is revealed to us in common things. A mustard shrub, a woman baking bread, a fishing net. Help your church witness to the surprising yet common ways you encounter us in daily life. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. When your word is opened, it gives light and understanding. Increase our understanding and awe of your creation. Guide the work of scientists and researchers. Treasuring the earth, may we live as grateful and healing caretakers of our home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the birds of the air nest in branches of trees, gather the nations of the world into the welcoming shade of your merciful reign. Direct leaders of nations to build trust in each other and walk in the way of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your Spirit helps us in our weakness and intercedes for the saints according to your will. Help us when we do not know how to pray. Give comfort to the dying, refuge to the weary, justice to those who are oppressed, and healing to the sick, especially our members and friends who are listed in the bulletin. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You show steadfast love and direct us to ask of you what we need. Help this congregation ask boldly for what is most needed. Refresh us with new dreams of being your people in this place and time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In you, our lives are never lost. Strengthen us by the inspiring witness of your people in all times and places. Embolden our witness now and one day gather us with all your saints in light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the sure and certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always. Salvation belongs to our God and to Christ the Lamb forever and ever. Great and wonderful are your deeds, O God of the universe. Just and true are in your ways, O ruler of all the nations. Who can fail to honor you, Lord, and sing the glory? of your name salvation belongs to our god and to christ the lamb forever and ever for you alone are the holy one and blessed is the one whose name is the word of god all praise and thanks to you Salvation belongs to our God and to Christ the Lamb forever and ever. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word, you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith. Increase our hope and deepen our love for the sake of the world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. 
Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. So gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.